Spiral from the Book of Saul, the ninth entry in the Saul franchise. So, no real spoilers here guys, but I do want to warn you. At the end of this video, I will be talking about a scene the trailers showed. I've got some comments on it, but it is a spoiler, but I promise you it's not a big one. Still, if you don't want that, don't watch the last 30 seconds of this video. You've been warned, but before then, you are completely safe with me. So, Spiral tells the story of Zeke, a good cop amongst bank cops, who's trying to track down a copycat killer inspired by the late Jigsaw Killer. So, not that it's going to affect this review much guys, but I'm kind of burnt out on Saul. <laughs> Recently, I uploaded a video where I analyzed and reviewed the whole franchise up to now. I explained what it was like being raised with this franchise and it took a lot out of me because that video was an hour long. As you can imagine, it took ages to make, I put a lot of my efforts into it. And add to that, my laptop kept dying on me. It keeps turning itself off and yikes, it did my freaking head in. So once I'm done with this review, I'm gonna be chilling out, taking a break from this whole YouTube game and getting my laptop fixed. And I'll be enjoying my PlayStation 5 a lot more than usual. <laughs> so to summarize my thoughts on the franchise, I adore the first one, but even though some of them can be good, I'm mostly pissed off with the sequels. They made the story convoluted, and I don't like how they depended on gore more than story. Plus, I hated how Jigsaw was originally an evil villain, but the writers decided to humanize him in the sequels, and at times, turned him into an anti-hero. So as a result of that, I gave up on the franchise about a decade ago, and for the first time in a long time, I got excited for a Saw movie when I saw the original trailer to Spiral. When I clicked on that video, I didn't know that this was a Saw film. I just saw Chris Rock in a serious role being a police officer. But then the imagery and music kicked in and boom, Chris fucking Rock, one of my favorite comedians, is doing a serious role in a Saw movie? I couldn't believe it. Talk about thinking outside of the box, man. I shared this video like crazy. And with Rock being a producer and knowing that he pushed to get this crazy idea made, that proved to me that there was real passion behind the idea. Especially when you consider that Mr. Fucking Glass is in this film. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I wasn't expecting a masterpiece, but I was still excited enough to get pissed off when they postponed the release date by a whole year due to COVID. The only trepidation I had was that Darren Lynn Bowsman was directing it. He also directed Saw 2, 3, and 4, and that put me off, because I really didn't like Saw 2. Saw 3 happens to be my favorite Saw sequel ever, but then Bowsman shat all over it with Saw 4, so that got me nervous. Plus, I knew this was written by the same guys who wrote Jigsaw, but if I'm being honest, I actually liked that film a lot more than most. I was just hoping that the writers were still hungry enough to breathe new life into this franchise. And in my opinion, they did. I think Spiral is very ambitious and I see a lot of passion in it. But still, I am glad I didn't expect too much from it because I'm disappointed. Spiral has a lot of problems, but I still do disagree with many complaints fans have with it. So let's get into it. Chris Rock, the only reason why I sought this film out. Many people have complained about his performance, saying that they couldn't take him seriously and he can't act for shit. Well, in my cinema, the audience clearly agreed with that because they started laughing at the start of the film when Rock tried pulling some serious faces and expressed anger. I saw where they were coming from. Now, I wasn't laughing with them, but I was very worried. He was the reason why I was looking forward to this and there he was forcing his lines out and pulling some really silly faces. But thankfully, that disappeared for me. I thought he did very well in this film as time went by. At first, he was typical, charismatic Chris Rock. His opening monologue on the movie Forrest Gump was funny as fuck and a lot of his dialogue sounded like 
unused stand-up material, and I was loving it. But as the film went on, he put the comedy to the side, so it didn't interfere with the drama, and I really dug his performance. Now when it comes to his character Zeke, of course at first I was pissed off with how cliched he was. A rough tough cop who doesn't play by the rules, he doesn't want to work with any rookie, he's divorced, hates his ex-wife, barely gets to see his son, generic as hell. However, that didn't stop me from liking him. His character is a good cop, giving me someone to root for, which is sadly rare in Saw films for me. And it's not like his cliches were prevalent throughout the whole film. I really liked him and supported his journey. When it comes to the new Jigsaw killer, I found this villain fucking creepy. Just like the original film, this killer is mostly a bodiless voice, making him so sinister. I heard a lot of complaints about the voice. People think it sounds like a child. Hello, Detective Boswick. I want to play a game. I actually fucking love that voice. It's so robotic and insincere, cold. I know that it's a text-to-speech app that's slightly pitched down, but it does make sense to me. The killer wants to hide his identity. It makes sense that he would use some type of app. I also love the imagery when it comes to the killer. I was never a big fan of Billy the Puppet, believe it or not, but this new puppet in Spiral pleased me. It's this pig puppet that's all bent out of place, signifying that this copycat killer is coming after bent cops, crooked cops. It's simple, but effective. I really like it. And as grim as the violence is in Spiral, these traps are mostly very grounded. They're not too over the top like some of the other Saw films. I actually believe that someone can build these traps for once. I also love that there's not that many of them. The traps and violence take up about 25% of the film. The rest of it is a grounded police drama with characters trying to figure out who done it. And in my previous sort of video, I said that I rewatched the franchise as a refresher to get into Spiral. And it turns out that was unnecessary because Spiral doesn't rely that much on nostalgia. You can watch it and easily get into it, even if you haven't seen a single Saw film before. There are very few references to the previous films, no returning characters, no flashback scenes connecting it to the franchise. Spiral wants to stand out on its own. Now sure, it does connect itself to the Saw franchise, but this is Spiral, not Saw 9. This has a mostly completely different feel to the other films. Lots of outdoor shots, awesome cinematography, perfectly conveying the extreme contrast between the outside world and the hell Jigsaw's victims fall into. And speaking of the outside world, that's where Spiral is mostly set. We don't get much of a B-plot this time round, where we focus on some type of Jigsaw game, and that is unheard of for a Saw film, so I dig it. Spiral is taking Saw in a new direction, and that has to be commended whether you love or hate the franchise, right? <sighs> but let's say that they made a Saw sequel, which was a romantic film, right? That would obviously be taking Saw in a new direction. But if that romance film feels like the romantic scenes between Anakin and Padme, we got a fucking problem, right guys? Well, that's how the police drama feels to me. Aside from the obvious cliches I mentioned before, the plot and characters are very, very thin. Now, in most of the Saw films, the police drama usually felt thin because there was a lot going on in those films. It was a lot to multitask, right? No wonder the police drama was underdeveloped. But here, a good 75% of the film is the police story. So when it came out just as thin as the previous films, it blew my mind. Clichés aside, Zeke is very underdeveloped. He has a shallow relationship with his father, he's divorced and doesn't get to see his son, and neither do we. His ex-wife appears in the film and she gets about 30 seconds of screen time. That's about it. We don't learn much about Zeke. Now as I said, I did like him, but that was because of Chris Rock's charisma and the simple fact that he was a good, caring cop. Beyond that, there's barely anything there. 
We don't even get to know much about what the rest of the characters think about this whole chaos. There's no downtime where the cops can hang out and discuss how they feel about these killings. Its fast pace gets in the way of the story. It moves way too quickly and everyone is cranked up to the max. Tensions are always high and it doesn't feel gripping, it feels exhausting at times. Now when this comes out on Blu-ray, I'll gladly add it to my collection, but I'll instantly go into the deleted scenes section where I can see how much of this was cut out because I swear, we need a longer version man, they must have cut so much story out of this, it just feels too short. Yet at the same time, it feels a bit too long. Weird. And Samuel Jackson, you can tell he's just here for a paycheck. He's typical Samuel Jackson. He says motherfucker many times throughout the film and he yells a lot. He doesn't stand out in the slightest. He's just Samuel Jackson. I fucking love this guy, but it does get a bit boring when you're seeing him doing the same thing again and again and again. Remember, Spiral was trying to pump new life into this franchise and I think typecasting Samuel Jackson was not the way to go about it. It's like having Arnold Schwarzenegger in this film and he's constantly saying I'll be back. It's just tired. And as I said before, I'm not a fan of how the previous writers made the Jigsaw killer into some type of anti-hero. Well, sadly they do that here with this killer. He's mostly killing bad cops. As a result of that, I don't really feel too scared for the character Zeke because I don't feel like he's in much danger. I never believed that the killer would go after him. He has no reason to. So that did remove a lot of the tension. But what disappointed me the most was the third act. Now obviously, no spoilers here, but remember this film was advertised as a whodunit. So I don't think it's a spoiler to say that yes, the new killer's identity gets revealed. But I don't like that here, for two reasons. One, there was pretty much nothing compelling about the reveal. I sat there, blank faced, unmoved, thinking, oh okay, so it's you, and you're doing it for this reason. Okay. Very disappointing. And two, to me, Jigsaw in the first Saw film was legit scary, because we didn't learn that much about him. And although again, this new copycat wasn't as scary because he's kind of like an anti-hero, I was still very creeped out by him. I hadn't enjoyed a Saw villain this much since the first Saw. So when this uninteresting reveal came out of nowhere, it just took the magic away from me. Like seriously, they shouldn't have revealed his identity. He was far more interesting being a bodiless voice. And again, without spoilers, I want to talk about the ending. Why the hell do these Saw films struggle to impress me with their endings? Saw 1's finale was so amazing, so iconic that every Saw film after tried to replicate it. And I don't blame them, who wouldn't want to try and replicate that brilliance? Now I liked Saw 3's ending, but Saw 4 came along and fucked it up. And Saw 5's ending did leave an impression on me. That's about it. The rest of them just don't impress me. And Spiral sadly did not break that tradition. Now to its credit, this ending does feel a bit different to the other Saw films, and this one actually does slightly make a political statement, which is pretty unheard of for a Saw film. But still, it wasn't that thought provoking, and I didn't expect the credits to go up so soon. Once the credits came up, I was like, that's it, really? I felt very deflated. Don't get me wrong, this ending is not bad, it's just not that interesting. This is a Saw movie trying to recharge the franchise. This ending was not the way to go about it. So in the end, yes, yeah, Spiral is very disappointing. It's very, very thin and I don't know how, after all of this effort, this is what they came out with. But with that being said, I still did enjoy it more than most. And I'm hoping that we get some type of extended cut on Blu-ray so that way we can finally add some meat to its bones. Am I tired of Saul? Yeah, of course I am. I was tired of this almost a decade ago. And yeah, I really do want a Spiral 2, and hopefully a Spiral 3. So it clearly did something right. I'm just hoping that if we do get a sequel or two down the road, it won't get too convoluted or violent, because I've seen how disappointing these sequels can be. 
so I'm hoping that it doesn't go down that path. Only time will tell. As flawed as it is, I do respect the Bulls, I do commend them for the effort, and Chris Rock, damn, talk about stepping outside of your comfort zone. I really hope we see more of this type of thing from him because I do take it seriously, unlike most people. Just try and calm down a bit, Chris. I'm gonna give Spiral from the Book of Saul a 6 out of 10. <laughs> and I might change my mind here, as I've only seen Spiral once, but for now, this is my ranking of the Saul films from best to worst, including my ratings for them. Okay, so here's the slight spoiler for you guys. If you're not interested, please go away. So, I'm really pissed off with the trailers to this film, man. I'm tired of trailers doing this nowadays. This, right here, is exactly what gripped me and many others to see this film. It, it's a fucking terrifying image. Like, dude, don't do it, don't do it, don't saw it off. Oh God, oh God. We're obviously flashing back to the iconic foot sawing scene from the first movie. Like, I swear, that was only shot for the promos and trailers. <laughs> nothing comes of it. There was absolutely no need for that shot to be in the film. It does nothing. He doesn't saw off his own hand. He just uses the saw to get a key. <laughs> Is that it? I'm really tired of trailers doing things like this, but there we go. That's enough blood and guts for me. I'm getting some sun on my skin. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Stay jiggy. The Badger appreciates you. Game over. <laughs>